Hello everybody, um, so I wanted to look at South America farming um, and put that in perspective with the rest of the world. Um, there's a lot of things to look at. Um, South America is a little bit strange. It's actually uh, kind of biased uh, towards Argentina and Brazil, um, but particularly uh, what you might not expect is Argentina has quite a lot of farmland um, and Brazil uh, as well and then there's some very interesting farmland uh, kind of out of Colombia uh, Ecuador uh, Venezuela up here on the north side and then as you head into Central America so uh, and then there's a little chunk down here in Chile as well uh, that can be pretty interesting so um, some of these red areas are kind of uh, questionable farming areas new areas or even uh, you know maybe not the best areas the blue areas are more traditional farming land areas so uh, we're gonna try to look at both um, but in general here is the kind of overall map of what the farming situation looks like you can look at it globally um, but uh, we're gonna kind of look carefully at South America and I'm gonna zoom in here to look at the main chunk so uh, so basically uh, there is a lot of cattle down in Argentina um, but we're gonna kind of look at the details here in a second. So one of the awesome things about South America, it's the one of the only regions on earth that has growing agriculture. So Africa, China, India, all of that uh, is decreasing, but you can see here for the most part, uh, agriculture is a serious chunk of the economy in South America. Um, so you can see there's a global share here and you can kind of see what's been going on. So basically it's the largest chunk um, of the market share in terms of exports. Um, next is minerals, um, metals, and so on. So you can see that that uh, actually has been struggling a little bit here since 2012, but it's starting to go up again since about 2018. Um, but give you some idea of what's been going on. So let's look at a global soil map so you can kind of see what's been happening here. Uh, it's actually kind of surprising uh, that Argentina has so much farmland. It's actually drier down in Argentina than in Brazil and yet uh, a significant amount of farmland here. You can see it's a little blue pocket. Um, not a whole lot of farming there, but you'd be surprised what's been going on here. So you can kind of see there's this kind of pocket here. Uh, heading into Asuncion and then uh, off in Brazil here, kind of southern and then west of Sao Paulo um, and in this region here and then out towards Brasilia, um, kind of another pocket of farmland. So this is kind of the question here. These guys probably moving out towards the Amazon and then especially these regions in here. Um, a lot of people would question the farming there. Um, and especially in Colombia, you can start to see this is starting to get into the jungle even. Uh, farming pockets and you can see some other pockets here uh, right uh, along the Amazon so uh, you might want to look at the soil grid there's also a forestation map here you can see pink regions there's actually a lot of deforestation going on in Russia and in Africa in the Congo much more so than in the Amazon but you can see um, there is a legend here and it shows you uh, agriculture forest grassland and so on so agriculture is basically this uh, kind of oops let me see here if i can <laughs> drop this so you see the agriculture here in the midwest and heading up into canada there's almost more as much in canada as there is in the united states which is interesting but you can see quite a chunk here uh outside of uh between kind of paraguay rio sao paulo and uh capital here Belo Horizonte maybe being kind of focused but uh, certainly um, there's some agriculture veins kind of heading into here so this is a forestry map um, um, you can also look at the population density actually a lot less people in South America than even in Africa you can see uh, certainly uh, one of the least populated areas of the world but you can see kind of Argentina here Sao Paulo Rio uh, and then some of the uh, mountainous cities up here um, that are interesting to see. Okay, so let's look at the overall picture again, um, just so we understand what's going on. So basically you can see these regions here. Let me get the actual map so you can see. So here's the satellite imagery. You can kind of see there's basically, it looks like very stable land here and you can kind of start to see the little farming cities. So there's a lot of farming in here 
kind of heading up and through here you can see the farmland here and even some taking in of the amazon so you can kind of see the amazon maybe it should be going out into here but kind of some farm people going on in there and then this is the uh venezuela side and the colombia side you can see that there's some even maybe some pockets here um right on the edge of the jungle so um and there's actually a big national park here in colombia so that should be reserved there's a very important rain water system that comes in right in through here so a lot of bananas and from ecuador and peru as you head down into bolivia and other areas so uh, but it's super important to think about what's been happening here and how Argentina so it gets very dry very quickly here once you get on the edge of Argentina and then heads all the way down south so uh, this is very dry as well um, and you can see there's even a pretty large section of Brazil it's pretty dry um, but also has uh, some uh, possibility for agriculture uh, but you can kind of see here on the map uh, what that is like uh, and compare that to the satellite so I kind of want to show you the northern side of South America so you can kind of see where the cropland is in detail here let's go back and we can look at southern South America and you can kind of see in the cropland map where that is as well so here's the cropland you can kind of see the details here on the argentina side and then let's even look at brazil it looks like they even have a separate measurement for that so here's kind of more detailed imagery of the cropland in brazil um you can load that into google earth hopefully they have the whole thing but i haven't actually tried that let's talk a little bit about the crop schedule i'm just going to grab brazil as the main crop schedule so you can kind of see uh, what's been going on so it's actually because it's in South America and south of the equator it's going to be in the winter time for North America so you can see planting season here um, basically starts in like December or even September and then it kind of uh, harvesting typically happens around April or you can see a uh, spot here in July as well so that's for Brazil um, but you also have kind of a separate areas for bolivia colombia ecuador peru venezuela um kind of as you get towards the equator being a little bit more complicated um and then let's look at the actual south south america argentina paraguay um, so you can see even more of a bias uh, where you have a planting done in july uh, or excuse me june uh yeah june so it looks like june and then uh, some in october here so it looks like mostly in october and november uh, and then harvesting in about may so depending on the season for that so uh, i found this super helpful so here's a little more detail on south america uh you can kind of see some of the cropland in a different perspective as well as forestry and then you got a settlement here in <coughs> red <clears throat> let's zoom in and look at the population here <clears throat> kind of see what's going on so you can kind of see some Paulo <clears throat> bonus areas rio de janeiro bella Horizonte, and then as you get into the north side um actually being very interesting because you kind of get these mountainous cities kind of heading along here with bogota quint uh anyway and Mer uh, Panama and others so let's take a careful look at the river system so one of the reason for the farming down here is that most of this river system kind of heads down into Argentina so you can kind of see that I've actually kind of looked at the street view and zoomed in on the satellite imagery and seen all the farms here heading into Paraguay which is super interesting now unlike uh, kind of like you have the Mississippi River, it kind of all drains into here, the Amazon, and then you have a second branch here in Venezuela that's important to know about. And then also this little Colombian spread here and then uh, some other areas. So uh, cert certainly super important to see that there. Um, I wanted to show you this. This is the main crops for all of South America. You can see basically sugarcane is on a whole nother level, uh, soybeans and corn. Um, 
and then wheat actually being at another level here. So if we do this on a, uh, let's see, I can change this back to a non-log chart. So you can see there's really only these ones right here um, that are uh, kind of on the main uh, thing. So actually the diversity in South America isn't exactly what you might expect from a place that has a jungle um, there probably could be more diversity in the types of crops here's the overall climate map so you can kind of see what's going on the climate here has kind of a drier climate right in here um, and then this pocket here so actually it is similar uh, argentina to kind of the south side of the united states but even that is a little bit slightly different color you can tell so the climate isn't exactly the same but similar um, and then you get uh, some of that florida climate as you get closer to the north here and towards rio de janeiro and caribbean and then you get even really different climate hot near the equator I want to take a quick look at the marine traffic so you can kind of see import and export since so much of the food is possibly even exported. You can kind of see the hub being Santos and Rio de Janeiro here as well as up here in Venezuela kind of around this point here. Uh, and then a lot of the banana traffic from Ecuador and Peru and then even down to Chile and here. So you can kind of see how that all fits in. So that's all I got for South America. There's certainly a lot of details to look at. I had a lot of fun uh, kind of selecting particular farming regions. Uh, I looked at the soil map. That actually helped me out the most in South America, kind of rethinking about uh, where the farming would be based on the soil map. So you can see it's kind of changing here as I zoom in with some more detail. Um, but Basically, this is a kind of the floodplain for this major river here. Um, so there is actually a couple of floodplain spots down in here. It's surprising how little farming was done uh, in South America. Um, it's, uh, you know, some of the major cities don't really have a lot of farming. Now, you can see in North America, you can see there's quite a lot of farming. But again, one of the major problems both in North America and South America is the corn crops. Um, and soybeans relative to other types of crops. So they're just almost all corn and soybeans. Um, and we saw that in the data here because basically you got sugarcane being number one, but then soybeans and corn being uh, top number two and three. So not a whole lot of diversity, unfortunately, in the type of crop. So it would be nice to get a FAO map showing the exact type of diversity. Um, and even try to support more diversity, um, particularly in South America. Um, so that would be super important. So what we do see here in South America that we don't see in China or India is a significant percentage being food. If you click isolate here, you can get a particular thing. So you see soybeans being quite a lot, corn. For some reason, it doesn't show up sugarcane as much on this data. This is 2020 data, but uh, it doesn't quite match with the FAO data. So, but it's approximately the same. And you can kind of see all these other uh, foods as well, which is interesting to see. And you can select if it's too complicated to see, you can change it to two digit codes and even six digit codes to get really detailed on exactly what it is but four digits seems to be about right it's just hard to see some of these ones in here um, so i can't emphasize enough how important the river maps are in studying um, water and studying exactly what's going on um, i would also say you could load the rain maps from the fao as well um, that is very valuable to see per month um, but you can also use these crop maps uh, to kind of get an idea but they do have precipitation maps um, as well so i'm going to be working on some other stuff for central america and the caribbean and also indonesia which would be awesome to study the farming here um, and then i'm also going to try to do north america as well and europe but uh, it's going to be super awesome to look at what's going on in Central America and the Caribbean the island farming. Uh, it's going to be super interesting to look at. Um, but it's kind of a 
gateway to understanding South America kind of gives you a start of understanding with Central America and also with the Caribbean here so with the islands and then this will be pretty similar uh, maybe uh, to Indonesia the Philippines and other other islands in Southeast Asia so I'm totally looking forward to doing that uh, study there um, but there's cer certainly some really awesome farms uh, to look at uh, in these areas as well so I would not uh, you know these are very some of them are very controversial because it gets close to the jungle in these regions um, to try to figure out what can be done uh, to maybe move the farms uh, closer to the cities and not so far away so um, then then just have a suburban sprawl um, so I hope this has been uh, super helpful for you uh, let me know what you think uh, be glad to talk with you more about it the soil map, again, can be a little bit tricky to understand. Um, I definitely, you can actually click on it and it will tell you the type of soil. Um, and it's important to kind of compare that to your own country. Um, and you can kind of see uh, what the soil is. Um, and then also the rainwater map. So let me see if I can get a quick rainwater map. So here's a quick one from Wikipedia, kind of the averages. Um, you can kind of see uh, where the precipitation is. So it's actually kind of drier in this region here, even though there's a lot of farmland. Um, but then there's also some irrigation possibilities. So that's important to know about and you kind of see why some of the farmland is moving up in here. But then again, there's not a lot of rivers. So you kind of got to combine the river maps. Let's see if we can go back here to the river maps. So you can kind of see that this river heads up north here and this one heads south and these are kind of going off into that direction. So the irrigation uh, might be a little bit more complicated because you're just talking about up in the hills here versus down the valley. So you actually have to farm kind of in here, uh, which means closer to the jungle. And then that's a question in general as well. But here's the overall climate map so you can kind of see that the climate is pretty similar even though the uh, rain is a little bit different. Okay, so that's about it. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, let me know. I'll post all these links uh, so you can take a look at it. Um, let me uh, yeah, talk with you later. See you. Ciao.